Hey everybody, it's a gorgeous sunny day here in Michigan, which is totally unusual um, for us this time of year. Usually in the midwinter, we uh, end up with just gray days endlessly, um, which is what it's typically been like. But yesterday and today have been really nice, beautiful, sunny days. And that made me think about talking to all of you about vitamin D. Um, vitamin D is something that I talk about often here um, at the clinic in my practice with kids and young adults with mental health challenges. Um, and I think that most people tend to be unaware of how critical vitamin D is, not only for physical health, but also for mental health. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that today and give you some things maybe to think about in relation to vitamin D. Um, it's also been on my mind because in the last couple of weeks, I've had some intakes with um, some teenagers, um, three actually, all of whom um, their parents brought them in because they were having uh, either the beginnings of depression kinds of symptoms or they've had depression and mood um, irritability kinds of issues for a while that haven't resolved. Um, a couple of them have pretty high anxiety um, and all three of these um, teens have been having complaints of fatigue and just feeling like they don't have any energy. So they all came in for intakes and one of the things that I always look at when people are presenting with these kinds of symptoms is what's going on in terms of nutrient levels for them. But one of the first things I ask about um, is if they've had their vitamin D level tested. And what's interesting is most of the time, the people who are coming into um, my clinic at least have been to see other practitioners prior. Um, it's not unusual at all for the kids and the young adults who I see to have been um, placed on psychiatric medications for the symptoms that they've had. Um, and it's amazing to me how many of these patients have been put on psychiatric medication for mood issues, for anxiety, um, for you know various types of um, mental health kinds of issues, and no one has ever looked at what their vitamin D level is. And so in this one case um, of the patient that I saw um, most recently, um, that had never been looked at for her. Uh, she's been put on various types of antidepressant, anti-anxiety medications over the last couple of years. Her fatigue has continued to worsen, anxiety and depression have continued to worsen, so they've continued to try different meds for her. Um, and she's been in counseling and her parents are like, you know what, nothing seems to be sticking, the meds don't seem to be working very well, and she kind of seems to be getting worse. So I had her go to her primary care doctor to have a few different labs run, but one of those labs is looking at her vitamin D level. And when that result came back, what it showed is that this young woman was severely deficient in vitamin D. So why might this matter? Why is this such a big deal? Well, we know from the research that vitamin D is critical for not only physical health, but also for mental health. Vitamin D plays a huge role in our brain function, in um, neurotransmitter function in the brain. And we know that when people are slightly deficient, moderately deficient, or certainly when they're severely deficient, that it has a major impact on um, their neurological functioning and on their mental health. So in this case, this young woman had been put on all different kinds of medications, had gone through all different types of treatments, and was still symptomatic because the root issue had not been addressed, and for her, one of those root issues was simply very, very depleted levels of vitamin D. So when we were able to get her um, started now on uh, repleting or replenishing vitamin D, we should start to see some nice improvement for her. And she, of course, was thrilled to know um, that there's something tangible here that um, perhaps can be done to get her feeling better. So I see this so regularly that um, I think it's important for people to be aware of the connection. So let's talk about what vitamin D is. Vitamin D is a nutrient that, um, actually it's, it's really interesting, it's different from many other nutrients that we take in, um, in that it's a nutrient that goes through lots of different processes in the body and actually gets turned into a hormone um, eventually. But it's also unique in that we can produce vitamin D from sunlight. 
and our skin takes in the sunlight and can convert it and can make vitamin D from it. And that's what really has gotten me thinking about vitamin D on this beautiful sunny day here um, in the winter in Michigan because one of the things that we find in this part of the country in the winter is that we tend not to get very much sunshine. And that has an impact on people's vitamin D levels because when we're not getting um, direct exposure to the sunlight, our body can't manufacture the vitamin D that it needs. So sunlight is one way that we produce the vitamin D that we need. Now, food is another way that we can get vitamin D, but unlike the majority of other nutrients, vitamin D is really hard to get um, through food and you really can't get enough of what you need just from your diet. So foods that have vitamin D are things like beef liver, egg yolk, um, fatty fish and a lot of fortified foods. At least in this country, there are a number of cereals and uh, milks and things that are fortified with vitamin D. Um, but even people who are eating really um, exceptionally good diets, um, it's really, really difficult, if not impossible, to get the amount of vitamin D that we need. Um, so, but that is another way that we can get it. Um, and then supplementation taking um, vitamin supplements with vitamin D can also certainly help with that. So in the winter time, what we tend to see here, at least in this part of the country, um, is that people tend to be more deficient. And actually, what research shows is that the majority of people are at least mildly vitamin D um, deficient. It's a very common um, deficiency. Um, so how do we test for that? Well, it's a very simple blood test. There's actually blood spot tests that you can have done now, or you can go to um, your medical provider and have uh, a typical blood draw done and they can look at that. It's a simple test to have done. And there's certain ranges that tell us um, where we're optimal, where we're maybe mildly deficient or severely deficient. You want your number to come back certainly higher than 20. Anything 20 or below indicates a deficiency. Um, it's not atypical at all for me to see patients, children, um, and teenagers especially, who their vitamin D levels are hanging out maybe in like the 15 kind of range. That's a deficiency. Um, I have had patients in my practice where their labs have come back and they have very, very severe deficiencies, a vitamin D level of like five or six. That's extremely low. That's very, very problematic for them. Um, so we want to be testing to look at that. Certainly um, anything below 20 is a concern, but actually as more research comes out, um, and the Vitamin D Council is a really great source of information on this, um, the recommendations by a number of health organizations have pushed um, the kind of optimal level that we're looking for even higher. So it's not like, well, you know, my child's at 20, that's, you know, not a deficiency, that's sufficient. Actually, where we prefer to see people is in the 40 to 60 range for their vitamin D level. I really prefer to have people at at least 40 um, and, and even up to 60, sometimes even higher um, is good. Theoretically, there are problems that can result if your level is um, above 100, although most of that's theoretical because as with most nutrients, we don't really know, um, you know how many potential problems actually would occur at higher levels, but certainly we wanna be aiming for something um, that's at least 40. And so having the testing done can be really valuable, and especially if your child is struggling with symptoms, like I mentioned earlier, fatigue, um, irritability, depression, anxiety. It's so simple to look at what their vitamin D level is um, to see if that's uh, maybe a potential um, cause of the symptoms. And then there, there's easy solutions for that because what we can do if somebody's testing comes back showing that they're deficient, we can use um, supplementation, capsules, liquids, um, lozenges, we can use supplementation to get those D levels up. Now, what you wanna be looking at for supplements, obviously, as I always talk about with people, you wanna be taking a really good quality supplement. Um, you wanna be taking a supplement where um, there's been some kind of independent testing, there's a seal um, or something on uh, the bottle or the container telling you that there's been verification that what the bottle says is in there is actually in there. Um, so you want to be taking a good quality supplement and you want to be taking um, the form of vitamin D called D3. That's a more um, easily absorbable and well converted form in the body. So D3 and sometimes um, it's important to look at other factors that can impact the body's ability to absorb and use vitamin D. And so sometimes you will see um, D vitamin D3 supplements that have vitamins K1 and or K2 in there because that's very helpful for um, absorption of that. 
So some of the things that we're um, looking at that vitamin D can be helpful with and why we want to have that in the um, optimal range for people, vitamin D, most people are aware, is helpful for you know, bone health. Um, that tends to be how um, you know, most people are aware of it. It's also really important for muscle function. So I've had patients where they get a lot of um, tightness or twitching in their muscles or sometimes you know, when they're trying to relax or lie down to sleep at night, they get kind of restless legs, um, twitching muscles. Vitamin D can be really important for that. that those kinds of symptoms can can be a sign of um, vitamin D deficiency. Um, vitamin D is critical for the immune system, for strengthening our ability to um, fight uh, disease and fight illnesses. So vitamin D is especially important this time of year in the winter where I don't know about where you are, but here in West Michigan, there are all kinds of upper respiratory illnesses and flus and you know things going around. Vitamin D is really critical for bolstering our immune function to be able to fight those kinds of things. Um, lungs, lung function, uh, brain function, heart function, and I mentioned earlier also, um, you know, brain function in terms of neurotransmitter function in the brain. You know, it's thought now that vitamin D plays a critical role in the receptors in the brain that have to do with serotonin and other neurotransmitters um, that kind of impact our mood and our anxiety and things like that. So it's it's believed that that's why vitamin D is so critical for um, things like mood and depression, anxiety, and those kinds of things. So we can use supplementation to help improve those levels for us so that we can support all of those really important um, organ systems and functions in our brain and in our body. Um, from a supplement standpoint, the amount of vitamin D that people should be taking is somewhat dependent on what the labs show, um, but the reality is that really everyone can benefit from taking some amount of supplemental vitamin D every day. Um, for babies, that can start at 400 IU, um, international units is the way that we measure vitamin D, so 400 IU, um, and that can go up to 1,000 or 2,000 IU a day for um, older teenagers and adults. Now, depending on how depleted vitamin D levels are, when we get lab results back on people, sometimes people need to be on many thousands of units of vitamin D every day in order to get those levels up to where they need to be. So some people need to be taking 4,000 or 5,000 or even up to 10,000, but you want to measure that to be able to determine how deficient you are and then determine how much you need to take to get those levels up to where they need to be. But you know, my point in all of this is that before people are ever put on psychiatric medication for things like depression, anxiety, irritability, um, chronic fatigue, those kinds of things, before medications are even considered for those, the vitamin D level should be looked at. It's such a simple, simple component that can make such a huge difference for people's functioning. Um, and it's frustrating to me as a practitioner to see the number of children and young adults coming into my practice who have been on a roller coaster of different kinds of medications and different types of treatments for years and their symptoms have not gotten better because some of these very basic foundational issues have not been identified for them. And something as simple as vitamin D and looking at what the level is can make a big difference. So. The takeaway for you is if you yourself or if your child is dealing with any of these things, talk to your medical provider about getting a vitamin D lab drawn. Look at that and see if some additional supplementation or other strategies might be helpful to boost that. Um, and you may see a big difference in mood, anxiety, and some of those other symptoms that we talked about. Hope you found this helpful. If you have questions about vitamin D supplementation or anything else related to what I talked about today, Feel free to uh, post a comment um, below and I'll get back and answer those. Lori, thank you so much for chiming in. Um, I'm so glad that, that you agree and also see results with that. It's a huge factor. And again, I'm just always surprised at how um, commonly that's overlooked. Um, and it's such an easy thing to address. So if you have other questions or comments, put them below. I'll come back and answer them. Um, I'm going to go enjoy the sunshine. Have a great rest of your day.